What's up everybody, welcome to IT Security Labs and today we have a good one. We are going to be learning about Bloodhound and how we can use it to enumerate a Active Directory domain. This tool is to be used by pen testers or red teamers who want to find out information about an, an Active Directory environment that they find themselves in. This information can also be used by defenders or those who want to go and find out how to best secure their Active Directory environment. So during a pen test environment and you want to analyze and visualize security risks, how can you do that? This is where Active Directory bloodhound enumeration comes in place so our objective is to identify and understand any potential vulnerabilities misconfiguration and then find some attack paths that we'll be doing in today's lab we will be using the game of active directory i have videos on this channel that will show you game of active directory but in a nutshell we have a kali linux attacker here we already have some credentials on the domain in this case we have access to dc01 we actually need to, able to be able to find out if we can go to other domains. The game of Active Directory looks like this. We are on DC02, uh, the Winterfell machine. And now we need to find out, can we actually find information about the main domain, sevenkingdoms.local? Can we also find information about this child domain, esos.local? Because right now, as we speak, we are on the north.sevenkingdoms.local. So if you are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, highly encourage you to check out our Game of Egg Directory series. Uh, we have a link in the description here with a playlist that will show you how to install everything. So without wasting time, let's jump in. We find that there's a couple of different versions of uh, Bloodhound that you see floating out there. The first one is just the Bloodhound that you can install using your Kali Linux machine. So if you use Kali Linux and you say, hey, apt install Bloodhound, this is the legacy version. So this is the one by Spectral Ops that they highly suggest that we use. As you can see, it was updated maybe uh, two days ago. So this one has the updated information. How do we install it? Well, they do say that to install, we need to make sure that we install Docker Compose. This should also include uh, in the Docker desktop. So I will actually use these instructions for our demo today to see if we can get it, the latest one to run. And full disclosure, the one that we we're looking at here is actually running the legacy one that I had installed using um, Kali a long time ago. So now you and I are going to figure out how to install the latest one. And the goal is once we are done, we should be able to search for information like, hey, map some domain trust for me, find all domain admins. So before we even do anything else, Let's go ahead and install it in our Kali Linux machine. This is my attacker machine, Kali Attacker. And as you can see, um, I'm just signed in as root. By the way, don't do that. We need to sign in as a non-root pri pri privileged user. I'm just a little bit arrogant today I'm doing that. But in an operation, we do, we do not run as root. Or at least let's follow the instructions from the um, Spectral Ops here. So install Docker Compose. This should be included in the Docker installation desktop install installation what are they talking about here okay so here's the instructions from docker so what you probably want to look up is install docker on kali if you have not already done so and you'll find some instructions online and here's up update install docker io you might run into some issues but i encourage you to follow these instructions here to install docker Docker might already in be installed on your Kali, but if it's not, I will link you to you to these instructions here. It should be straightforward. And then once you install Docker, they say run curl and a Docker Compose app. Let's see. Uh, this should bring us a Docker Compose file and also be able to bring it up. But before I do that, let me check if I have anything that's running in Docker. Nothing. Okay. So let's run the curl command. Okay, failed to write the body. Uh, make the let's make a bloodhound directory. Okay, so right off the bat, I don't know why it's not liking this curl command. Uh, this here, but let's run them one at a time. Let's run the curl part first. So in this, run that curl command. And let's okay, so. As you can see, this is the Docker Compose file that they will like th that that we need to bring up. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll just uh, capture this to Docker Compose 
dot yaml yml okay get docker dash compose dot yaml here's my docker do compose yaml now let's bring it up docker compose app dash d docker compose is not installed for me let's install it yep let's hope there is no problems with installing docker compose on kali all right now that we installed docker compose let's try it again we're doing an app dash d so we can get it uh, in detached mode but this is how we're going to try to bring the container and while it's running they're saying run that in docker compose app okay then locate the randomly generated password in the terminal output of the docker compose so we check the terminal output for a password then in a browser we need to go to localhost on 8080 to log in so this should get our neo4j console and everything that we need so let's open a new terminal kill this one here and then let's make sure that this finishes i already have a um blood down and neo4j running so let me stop these they're already taking the ports okay now that i stopped that um my my container should should come up now hopefully there we go so problem fixed okay so after a while you notice that this one said um it completed so the docker compose file now our well, port 8080 is now up 44 seconds and so we have three total containers in order for our blood down to run the newest version so now let's go here and let's check it out all right so here's the newest uh, blood on community version they did say oh crap <laughs> i did not get the credentials um from my docker compose i can look at the docker logs docker logs um you let's see <laughs> so this is what you get for running in detached mode okay <laughs> So it's somewhere in here as you can see in the docker log so initial password is set to that so what i'll do is i'll probably copy that just in case okay so with that password which we can find in our docker logs they said we can sign in as admin in the password we should be able to change it right away all right so logging in with that password um it says your account password is expired please provide a new password for the account to continue so we need to change change the password okay i'm going to give it a password i just generated a random password that's supposed to be secure reset the password and then here we go as you can see here it says that um it appears that there's no data that has been uploaded yet Upload. since we don't have any data let's go to this gear at the top right go to download collectors this will give us the actual collector that we need then here i'll just click the download um the one for sharp hound since we're on sharp hound if you're on azure you use the azure hound so we down hit the download then uh let's go to the folder let's extract it so uh we will be extracting it to temp share i'll just extract the whole thing in there okay extraction successful close so now if i go to my temp share you notice that i have all these collectors the one that i want for sure is sharp hound your ps1 so that one is going to be the one that we will put out to the client so let's use xrdp to get to the victim machine or the client so we x free rdp the ip address of the domain controller that we have access to using brandon stack this brandon user is an administrator but even if this user was not an administrator we should be able to collect some data pertaining to the domain that they are part of in this case i'm ignoring the certificate uh, allowing clipboard to this rdp session and i'm sharing the temp share folder which already contains my sharp hound you can use other means but this is what i'm doing right now and then once we get in here we're just going to launch powershell and i'm launching powershell as an administrator let's go to see windows tasks if i had to do a day in here i see nothing just make sure just in case you do not have remote desktop 
but you 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 had a PowerShell or any other command line access, open PowerShell, then invoke web request to your Kali Linux machine on the port that you started your HTTP server and then download SharpHound this way. So in this case, since it's in my temp folder here, I'll probably do a Python 3 m http all right so i'm hosting an http server here i can come and just download it just want to show you a couple of ways you can get files to windows in case you do not have windows remote desktop okay now if you do it there you notice that we have sharp on the ps1 so now we need to collect some data before we start running collector commands we need to import sharp Hound. For example, if you try to run it like this, it says, hey, uh, what are you talking about? So to import it, we can do something like this. Now, if we do this, so say bloodhound collection method all d let's first start by 7kingdom.local for the domain. We can specify the domain um, DC name here, but I think we can just specify the domain. All right. Oh, what happened here? Get domain call failed for seven kingdom dot local. Let's try it again. Seven kingdoms dot local, not just seven kingdom. Okay, I need to collect information about the north domain. I need to collect information about the Essos child domain as well. So these are the three places we need to collect data from north dot seven kingdoms dot local. 7kingdoms.local and esos.local. Our main goal is for Bloodhound to tell us if there's any users in here that are vulnerable, if there's any relationships. I mean, we can, can tell that there's some trust, but you will not know this unless if you are given a network diagram like this. So this is what we are working on right now. It's just collecting. And when it's collecting for me, I like to look and make sure that it's seeing things. Here it's saying that it's all 228 name to SID mapping. So this shows me that I'm getting some data here. So I'll let it run. Uh, after it's done with seven kingdoms the local, I'll change that to north and I'll also change that to Essos. Okay, so once the first one is done, I'll run the second one. In this case, the domain is going to be Essos. So the command is still the same. Invoke bloodhound collection method is all, then the domain is Essos. And just to make sure to show you the next one, the second command will be seven kingdoms dot local then we want another seven kingdoms dot local so this is the one other command this will collect for the north domain and then the third command will be just the seven kingdoms dot local just like what we ran at the beginning so you need to run all three and all three will collect some data so if you hit enter on this one uh this one is very quick the essos one And then please run the third one once they're all done running if you go to your c windows actually for me this is going to be in windows system 32 this is because this is where i launched it from so notice that i'm ending up with these files here what you want to do is you want to copy these three files so one two three after you run them so right now i'm finishing the essos one and once it's done we would like to copy it to our share folder where is this share folder i'm already sharing it it shows up here as share on kali and as you can see i copied three zipped folders so one two three right click extract all when you extract these three folders you end up with one folder two and three folders in each folder there is json data this is mounted on my kali linux in the temp folder so coming back here administration file ingest upload files we will choose to browse to go to my temp folder so i'll go to other location computer tmp in my share folder Instead of the share folder, those three folders that I unzipped in Windows are here. So if this way, you know, you don't have RDP access, download the zipped folder and unzip them in Kali. And once you unzip, you end up with content inside of them. So you need to highlight all these and hit open. 
it will say you hit ready then you need to hit upload and upload one more time and this will be done 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 clear do that for three or three folders and you end up with data that has been uploaded but now that we have data how do you use it so in order for us to use this let's come up with an objective i want to leave this winterfell domain machine from the north of seven kingdoms dot local i want to com compromise the root domain seven kingdoms dot local so i'm on winterfell that is my starting node and i would like to end on oh by the way i'll right, right click and mark this as a uh, add to owned because i own that winterfell machine and then i would like to go to another machine let's just pick a random one in this case we want to go to king's landing all right so king's landing the computer and here boom we get a path right away let me let me minimize this so he's saying hey from winterfell we have sync Labs password here you can end up on brazos.esos so i can go through esos so from winterfell all the way to brazos and then from brazos go to seven kingdoms so this is actually proving to be helpful already and then i can do a uh, from brazos i can do a golden certificate here on the esos domain and then once i own the this esos domain is trusted by this so there's since there's trust i should be able to compromise seven kingdoms and end up here so that's one way that's probably what i'll do in our next video so that we can actually know how to use bloodhound now that we've installed it and we know how it works if you go to the cipher this is where the queries are uh or if we do help here's the help uh this article describes the cipher cipher search within blood down users of blood down should use it to extend the basic functionality so one of the most overlooked features is the ability to enter raw cipher queries or oh, i don't know how to write those yet hopefully i get better at them but for now i want to use the pre-built-in searches <laughs> that's what i can use for now so let's click on the envelope and use the built-in searches because we are noobs so clicking here all domain admins can be listed and as you can see that's not gonna be okay map domain trust who trust who as you can see the seven kingdoms the local is the center one that is trusted by all of them so we already kind of knew that we can also find cables to both users all of them okay just in case we did not know so on the esos side of the domain which we are not on yet um svc sql underscore svc is kbros stable so we can actually try to kbros this as well and end on the esos domain and escalate our privileges that's another way to do it shortest path from kbros Ke stable users let's check to see oh there we go so if you wanted to find some shortest path <laughs> this is how we do it okay this is ugly um shortest path to domain admins so this is just the same classic stuff if you do not know how to use bloodhound or have not used bloodhound subscribe in next videos and in future videos with active directory i'm only going to be using this bloodhound here so our very next video for next week we're going to be finding out how we can actually end up on the root domain using bloodhound like i just showed you earlier so we're going to stop here and if you really like this content please subscribe like this video and also let me know in the comments if there's interesting things that we can do with active directory or if there are other tools that you have used with this one otherwise thank you very much for being here and i hope to see you next time have a good one